<laughs> um, yeah, so hi, this is Joe Maycook with the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, Cultivating Community Gardens and Memory Project, and today I'm speaking with Marquita Hurd, um, land care manager at THS, and a uh, longtime community gardener at Mrs. Woody's Community Garden. Uh, currently, we are in the PHS office building at 100 North 20th Street. Um, we were just visiting at um, Mrs. Woody's Community Garden and also many of the other gardens that Marquita has worked with and the East Park Revitalization Alliance and Ep or EPRA um, and also in PHS still um, mm -hmm. and just as a community gardener. <laughs> Three hats. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Marquita uh, just for the record again, um, where did you grow up and did you or your neighbors have gardens there? I grew up in Strawberry Mansion. Mm -hmm. None of my neighbors had garden, but my grandpa had a garden up the boulevard and he would bring us back fresh produce like a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. And he always talked about gardening. And then his mom, when I went to her house, she had a garden in her backyard. She grew like her cabbage, her kale, her collard greens and all that stuff in the backyard. She did that till she passed away. Mm -hmm. And so your first memories of gardening were of seeing mm -hmm. that garden. Yeah. Um, but you learned to garden in a very different way. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school for landscape architecture. They don't really show you how to grow food. They'll talk about what plant to put in the right place if you're doing a, um, you know, some kind of landscape or outdoor type of area. Um, but I took a few horticultural classes and we had to learn how to grow. So that was like one semester. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to honestly say the horticultural students carry me. They'd be like, mm -hmm. you don't know what you're talking about. You're a landscape architect. And so they would like show me how to do stuff and I just follow whatever they told me to do. But when I graduated in 2012, um, I saw Miss Woody working in the garden, and I was like, hey, can I come help you sometimes for a few mm -hmm. hours to get some stuff out of the garden, like to get some food? And she was like, oh, yeah, you can come. And she basically showed me how to garden. Um, and through her, I met Nicole Sugarman and East Park Revitalization Alliance. And once I had volunteered consistently with her for, like, months and months, they offered me a job. Yeah. So you went from Temple University, mm -hmm. Ambler Campus, mm -hmm. land, doing the landscape program to uh, Mrs. Woody and also working with, at the same time, the East Park Revitalization yeah. Alliance. Well, I worked, I volunteered with Mrs. Woody for probably like six months. Mm -hmm. And then Nicole would always see me out and then she asked me that I want to work there and she said that we would still be helping Miss Woody. So then I worked with them for oh. like three or four years. Yeah. And we managed like several gardens in the neighborhood and we grew food and we sold it at a farm stand and we taught, you know, youth at the Mander Recreational Center how to grow food and people at Strawberry Mansion High School, their culinary program, we grew mm -hmm. food for them and they would like learn how to grow with me once a week and cook it in the building with the chef. So it was nice. I learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but talk to me a little more about Mrs. Woody because um, you've... Men, like obviously the garden is named mm -hmm. for her um, and you mentioned that she really helped you know teach you how to garden vegetables mm -hmm. um, it was a really great welcoming generous influence yeah. with you yeah Miss Woody was really nice like really sweet she was really like older so she didn't do like super intensive gardens like we would never be in a garden for like five or six hours and then she did like two or three hours at a time a little chunk at a time she didn't have like a a plan she just knew what needed to go in so she would just find space and put it in and she would plant so much stuff so close together <laughs> like to pack as much as possible she grew like a lot of the greens and like tomatoes and okra and like patty pan squash like stuff mm -hmm. I never ate until I started working with her. like I absolutely hated tomatoes until I started gardening she gave away bunches of like collards every year and she grew a lot of collards I found out after she died that she didn't even like collars. She just grew them for other people. She liked the mustard greens. <laughs> so she gave, like, so much away to the neighbors. So if you walk by and say, hey, can I have a squash or a tomato or a pepper, she would just give it to you. She didn't care. It was, like, helpful to, like, everybody in the community all the time. Um, she just did a little bit at a time each day. She didn't 
or so I think of gardening as really relaxing. I know I've been to other people's gardens where it's like super manicured, it's nice, and they like stress, like everything got to be perfect. I don't associate any of that with gardening. I feel like it's a relaxing <laughs> type of thing. So um, it's different. She was just like really wonderful. She told me that she grew all of this stuff and she would store it in a big freezer and keep it for you know mm -hmm. over the winter so when we would come out in the spring she'd be like oh i'm almost out of everything in the freezer we gotta hurry up and get stuff growing <laughs> like you know like ready to get started again but she had a really like a six foot freezer and that's what they ate like off of so that's why she like you know squash and all that stuff like over winter as well so she had a plan <laughs> and they, she worked the plan even though if you didn't if you knew her you wouldn't know you know, she was doing all of this stuff. She was just a little old woman. She was really soft-spoken. Um, but her husband said if you made her mad, she didn't play. I don't know, but she I never made her mad. So I was like, I don't, I don't know. I just did whatever she told me. So she'd be like, oh, it's warm. It's been warm for a while. We're going to plant these beans. So I would just be like, oh, okay, show me how to plant them. And she would just give me instructions, like, you know, like four feet apart or four four inches apart or something, or use your thumb. Mm -hmm. And plant it at the end of your thumb in a row straight down or something like that. Like, And she just used whatever we had in the garden. So if she was growing, like, cucumbers or squash or whatever, she would just put it by the gate and let it grow up the gate. Mm -hmm. Like, she didn't care about a lot of fancy tools or any of that stuff. <laughs> she would just, like, put it where it needs to go so it can grow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so she had methods. Yeah. But her, like... A, a plan for planting was yeah. distinctly different yeah. than like everybody's <laughs> every gardener so as I've been working with EPRA you meet other gardeners they all plant differently mm -hmm. uh, I let Miss Miss Vinoka at Blaine at their garden and Miss Vinoka planted by like the moon cycle um, mm -hmm. the three gentlemen I really didn't know what their plan was and Nicole was like a gardener like went to school for agriculture and stuff she was really like to the T. She did like the best time. She took the best notes. I never seen notes this good. She could tell you like the exact variety of green beans that grow well if it rains a lot versus one if it's more dry. Like I was like crazy. Like gardeners are crazy. Like how do you how would you know the exact one that grew well if it was dry? But she it was like a science to her. Like she really had it down. So she would be like, It's May nineteenth, we got plant turnips. Like she just knew where's Miss Woody would be outside like it's been warm for a while we can put these in like you know just she just felt it you know it yeah. was, it's different but it, I really like enjoyed all of that experience like it taught me a lot because I was like I didn't know it was this many ways to plant right and then everybody has a different idea of how a garden should look so that's in there too so it, yes. was, it was cool yeah, you I liked it. You mentioned her like growing the cucumbers along the gate. Yeah, so like, if you were walking along outside, you could just rip them, like rip a piece off. <laughs> she would grow the squash. Like she didn't, like Nicole would like, she taught me how to like tie, like basket weave the tomatoes so they stay up. Mm -hmm. And Miss Woody would be like, they can be on the ground if you want them to. <laughs> like and she was real like loose and relaxed about stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. But I'd be like, well, Nicole said this would grow better if we tie it up. So do you want to tie it up? She'd be like, well, if y'all want to. So it was never like a. It was never a bone of contention. Yeah. But like, it was like. She's been doing it this way for a long time. But if y'all want to do something else, she didn't like mine. Like as long as you were helpful, she's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you and you mentioned that like other but that wasn't the case for every gardener in the no some of them are like really like they want stuff directly the exact way they want it you cannot change or alter anything in their garden <laughs> at all um i worked with mr harrison he grew a lot of sweet potatoes and like greens and corn and tomatoes and stuff in his yard and as with epra we would try to help support the gardeners in the neighborhood so like bring them compost bring them seeds or slips or transplants he didn't want anything from us really like he didn't want any compost he didn't trust anything from the city or any organization he had gotten something from the city before when they were giving it away and he said it made him sick for like a while so he doesn't didn't trust anything so only thing we could get him was like sweet potato slips <laughs> and that was that was all he would take from us nothing else not even like hay <laughs> and he would be weeding all the time and like cutting and trying to keep the weeds down but he wouldn't take anything he just didn't trust the city mm -hmm. so i don't know how we were the city but he just was like no nothing from an organization yeah yeah but we had a good time like when it would be time for us to harvest all the sweet potatoes everybody would just bring buckets 
and it would be like 20 different people with a bucket in his garden digging up stuff because he'd be like, I can't eat them all, so yo, everybody could come. So we just would have to be, we would be waiting for when he said we could come. Like everybody, like, it's going to be some good sweet potatoes, and I would take them to like my family and friends and stuff. So it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're working with EPRA, you're mm-hmm. working with all these gardeners in there and like, different on their different plots doing community food production Mm -hmm. um whether it be sweet potatoes or collard greens Mm -hmm. um but and so you're doing that for three or four years Mm -hmm. how do you come to your you know working for phs for mepra um i was at the farm stand um sometimes keith green who's like the director for vacant land Mm -hmm. for our team he saw me around, and I was an intern at PHS before I worked with Miss Woody. So before I worked with Miss Woody, probably in 2010 or 2011, mm-hmm. around then, I was a AmeriCorps Vista uh, intern here with the education team. Oh, wow. So I worked with Mindy and Barley and Miss Patricia, and the education team did like garden tenders and tree tenders and stuff. So I supported them. Um, so I was all of their interns, so I had, like, five different bosses. And mm-hmm. it was, like, my first job like that, so I was just running all over the place. So I did that, and then I worked with Epra for a while. And he saw me out there, and he asked me, like, um, would I be interested in a job? I think there's some jobs coming up. We want to need people. And he's like, you kind of know PHS. You've been, like, a liaison between them and Epra. You know, if this comes up, you should apply. And so it didn't come up for a while. And then I finally saw it online and applied for it. But it was cool. I, like, I didn't know exactly. Like, I knew he was with Vacant Land, but I didn't know, like, all the stuff that they did. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, yeah, I should apply and see if I could work. And I was, I got hired to be a field specialist. Right. And one, because one of the things that you mentioned is that, like, a lot of these lots, at least in the case of Mrs. Woody's, started out as, like, a vacant. Yeah. So Mrs. Woody's, her husband... That it was two houses on the end of the block, and they burnt down. And her husband was like a brick mason or a brick layer. So he put the path in in the middle, and he put the fence around the garden, and he brought in a bunch of soil. And that's how they started it. And she said it was like seven different families, so everybody just had an area, and everybody would grow. But they eventually, you know, like started dying because it was like a bunch of older people. Mm-hmm. Um and that's how it been. And he also used to water for her all the time, so she never had to worry about watering. So she was living good as a gardener because watering is like half the battle in July and August. So, yeah. 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 I do want to ask more about this is Woody's particular because there's so much that that comment just brought up. Um, nah, um, but so you come to PHS in like mm-hmm. 2015 or 2016 mm-hmm. about. Um, what roles did you, uh, you know, have play from then on? Um, at PHS, I the field specialist, so I manage contractors. So they mm-hmm. did stabilization work, and as they clean the lots for the season, like cut them. So they cut mm-hmm. from April to October 31st, twice a month. So that's like me making sure everything gets cut, everything is done. Mm-hmm. Um, for stabilization, that's when we find the vacant lots and submit them to the city for approval. If they get approved, then we get to, like, clean everything out, put in a lawn, put in a post and rail fence, and then it just gets maintained after that. So I was managing it. I never managed contractors, but when I talked to Keith, he assured me that managing contractors was similar to managing uh, the people who work in the gardens because you can't manage them. <laughs> like, you can't manage gardeners. They know what they're doing. So he was like, if you can manage dealing with all these different types of gardeners, you can deal with some contractors. Mm -hmm. Um, So I worked there, worked with him doing that, learned everything. Like, it was a lot of process. And it was a big change going from working outside all the time to working in the office sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just different because, you know, he just says, like, a lot of processes, systems, everything. And I wasn't used to, like, any of that working with APRA, so it was a, a big shock. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, and then working at the flower show, um, working with guard tenders, I still teach sometimes at, at tree tenders, like tell them about what vacant land is and what we do. 
sometimes I was helping Sally with garden tenders or green city teachers if she needed like help with something or portions I would do um garden design with her like how to set stuff up so if you have a lot and you wanted to make a garden what would you do what would you look for and just talk to them about you know having a water source how much light you get what you could grow growing in beds or grow you know versus growing in the ground and like how they would set stuff up and so I did that for a few years and got like way better at managing contractors <laughs> and then my current position is community land care manager I manage 19 community groups so nonprofits that work in their area they identify lots up to like 200 or 250 that they want to clean as a way to make their neighborhood beautiful and a lot of these groups already do that they just don't get paid for it like they were doing it for free so um say you have to clean up the lots and cut them twice a month one in the first half of the month one in the second half of the month for 10 months every year um we approve their list we submit it to the city make sure you know like they're okay with everything because they get paid from the city Mm -hmm. um so basically we monitor them manage them and it's a um economic development tool because they hire guys right from their neighborhood if they're Mm going to clean their neighborhood they also um you know they use that money to run other programs so like EPRA used to have a group that cleaned Strawberry Mansion and they would use that to fund their after school program or fund you know the stuff that they did for the summer camp right so it's a way to build and have more programs in the community um they also develop as in like they start with maybe three guys in a weed whacker we tell them like you know this is what you need this is what you got to do help them develop in a business and then maybe they can go into philadelphia land care which is more the ones with the fences so community land care we cut lots with no fence it's just a loose vacant lot and it hasn't been treated with the stabilization process so the stabilization process of course makes everything like flat and the grass is nice we do all the rough lots so like however whatever condition it is where the lot fell down you know like when the house fell down and they just let it grow and it's weedy they come in and cut those which is you know rougher than the regular land care lots Mm -hmm. um but it's 19 different groups all different areas from like you know like from mount airy all the way over to like southwest so i drive all over the city checking on stuff they come in classes so they can learn different stuff like so they can develop um as a group so we did a uh, equipment maintenance class recently so they learned how to manage their weed whackers mowers and everything so if you took the class you learn like you can take care of 90 percent of the stuff on your equipment yourself so it saves them from having to pay a shop to do it it saves them, you know, just time so they can have their equipment up and running and keep it running for longer. Um, we did how to bid. So, like, if it's, a, you know, something like we also do debris removals, they learn, you know, like, if you go out and see certain stuff, how much would that cost, submit the cost so that they can, you know, add that to the things they're doing to bring in more money. And the whole thing is that they're cleaning their neighborhood, which they already have pride in. They always already love it. They already know the people there. So they're providing a service. You know, they start a business and then they just take their business and just keep growing the business over time. You just kind of help people yeah. start with that. Yeah, but it's I like working here because they use our lots to like start more gardens, of course. And they also use it as like a, a way to connect with their neighbors. They end up having parties. I get invited to a lot of block parties because I clean the lots. Like <laughs> um, I think people don't realize a lot of older people in Philadelphia pay to get these lots clean. So... It'll be an older lady that's like 80. She lives next door to a lot. She's paying her sister's cousin, whoever, who has a weed whacker to come once or twice a month to clean it. But at 80, you're on a fixed income. I would prefer if we were cleaning or cutting it, you know, for them because it saves them a lot of money and a lot of them don't have it. It's just they don't want to live in an unsafe, un, yeah. you know, uh, environment that's not clean. So I like am very proud of us doing that service. Yeah. Um. You, you were talking about older people, but you mm-hmm. also mentioned summer camp, yeah. and um, and you've talked before. You mm-hmm. were just talking to me um, about working with high school uh, mm-hmm. kids and whatnot. So, could you talk a little bit more about that experience? And okay. you, yeah. So uh, at East Park Revitalization Alliance at EPRA, they had a, like a lot of ties to the summer camp. They helped fund some of it and like some of the events and everything. <laughs> So for the summer camp and the after-school program at Mander Rec Center, 
we would teach the kids how to grow. So they would come out like once a week and go to the garden on 32nd and Ridge. And they would like, <laughs> you know, learn how to grow stuff, learn how to plant. And we would take whatever we harvest back and like clean it and cook it and make something like once a week. So the kids were really excited about it. Like they really love, like, and the first thing you always grow with kids is like radishes because they're like the quickest thing to come up. So they would grow stuff. I'm like, oh, are we going to eat it? We're going to try it. And they get introduced to like how things grow. A lot of kids don't know where our food comes from. Like in your mind, you say, oh, it comes from a farm. But like, what would do a farm look like? How does it work? So people will think like worms or something is disgusting. It's like, you need these. It's okay. And we did that a lot. We also worked at the Strawberry Mansion High School. We had a culinary class every Monday. We would go out with their culinary teacher with the kids each class showed them about growing we would grow stuff harvest stuff and they had this really loud teacher he like growing your own food is like printing money but he would scream it like every class but if you were a chef at a restaurant it really is like printing your own money because how much is arugula really so it's like <laughs> he's like yeah this is like printing money so he taught the kids that um a lot of the kids signed up to go work for philadelphia youth network which is pyn mm -hmm. and so they helped us over the summer um, so it was me and like 10 to 12 kids every day for six weeks. And I did that two, like two years in a row and it was crazy. <laughs> so they would like help us. We help us. They would scream about how hot it is 90 million times. Like I never heard it's hot so much in my life. And I used to be like, just saying it's hot. Don't make it cooler. So we might as well just like work or whatever. Um, we would teach them stuff teach them how to grow, like how to manage stuff. And it was a lot of help for the gardens because you can weed faster, work faster, everything, like stuff that would take me hours would take us like 30 minutes because it would just be so many people. We started splitting them up into two groups. And since it was like seven different lots we worked on, um, seven different gardens, like I could just take half the one and half the other. We would finish like in like two or three hours, stuff that would take us like a day and a half. Mm -hmm. So I was, it was helpful and it was crazy because high schoolers are like, the worst <laughs> like that. like yes. it's like hurting cats like you got to keep them focused keep them on task somebody gonna wander off <laughs> somebody can't take it today it's too much it's too sh they just stressed out um but it was a good experience and then when it would rain or something we would do like i would teach them how to like pickle or how to grow stuff um towards the end of their six weeks we took them to the church because they had a computer lab and we redid everybody's resume or made them one if they never had one so that way, you know, they could get more jobs because they're like 14 or 15. Um, a lot of kids are low income, like they're right from the neighborhood or whatever. So it was a way for them to like start getting used to work, start getting used to going out there, trying, apply. They were really happy with the resumes. Like even when we made pickles and stuff, they liked that stuff too. Um, they really liked working at the farm stand, like selling the food because they got to see like, all right, I worked, I grew this, what did I grow this for? And you see like, a lot of families coming and getting food and it's like oh like it connected all the dots but it was hard every other day but the farm stand days so it's like on the farm stand days they kind of appreciated what we did but every other day it was like it's too hot to do this i don't know how you do this how do you do this all day um and one of the craziest things is when i worked with them at the school in the high school where the culinary class they were like you get paid to do this, you just do this for fun. Like, child, ain't nobody working with y'all for free. Y'all are t monsters. I <laughs> once left my phone out on the table and they all friended me on Instagram and I had to go find everybody and erase them. Like, cause I wouldn't lose my job for being friends with like the kids at, at, at high school. Like, I was like, what kind of monsters? <laughs> you know, like who would do this? So they were fun and it was like crazy. Right. And it was a good experience. We got to plant trees around the school. They had an event where the eagles came out to the garden. So we made like pita chips and different kinds of dips, you know, with food from the garden for the eagles. So it was like cool. Yeah. It just was kids. Yeah, now, <laughs> now I see how you're getting invited to all those block parties. I get invited to the block parties because I like, if I meet people in the community, the community doesn't believe the city is going to do a lot of stuff they said they're going to do. A lot of our neighborhoods have been there you know, not been taken care of for 50 plus years. So if I say like, all right, I'm gonna add this to the list. Somebody's gonna come out, start cleaning it, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, we'll see. And then the guys come out in the next two weeks and start cleaning. It's like, oh, this is my girl now. Like, so now I'm cool. <laughs> and then they tell 
like 50 other people so my phone number is all throughout the like the whole city i'm over it but it's for a good reason because they'll be like oh i got your number from such and such she said you can get this lot cleaned up i'm like who who <laughs> like like i don't know who's giving my number out but somebody has put my number on the list of numbers that old people need and so they definitely call me and be like i'm the block captain we got these lots they weren't cut or clean can you come out or whatever so it's mostly customer service <laughs> with everybody in the whole city is the customer and in you driving a lot mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i drive like seven hours a day is a minimum wow. yeah wow it's a lot yeah but it's cool yeah it's, uh, it's helpful <laughs> mm-hmm. you're meeting people and making connections with them and building yeah. yeah, and then oh, later on they like, oh, can we put a garden bed on this? I like, oh yeah, you can do one or two, and then uh, eventually, you know, some of them turn into actual like whole community gardens. Some of them just have that one or two, but it's just like, oh, they actually, you know, people care about it if you take care of it. So it's like mm-hmm. really nice. And plus, uh, they also let me know when the guys are coming to cut, so they snitch too. So it's a really good relationship. They're like, they ain't been out here in three weeks. Uh, like, that's good to know. So why are you not coming out every two weeks like you're supposed to? You know, like it's it's a nice it's nice when it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so now I do want to turn back specifically to Mrs. Woody's community gardens. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've mentioned that like you know the garden was run by like seven families originally, mm-hmm. plus Mrs. Woody mm-hmm. um, and her husband. Uh, when you came to it, mm-hmm. what what state was it, was it in? What did you see when you first came to it? Um, oh, it was everything was low. It was planted really well. Um, it the back part always had weeds, but everything else was like really low and well kept. It was like the back part was weedy, like around the fence, but mm-hmm. then beside that, she planted a bunch of strawberries. The back part being like the south part or the west. The back part, part is. I guess it would be the east part, like oh, okay. at the opposite of when you walk in. Mm-hmm. She had a bunch of strawberries on her side, and Miss Nikki had the other side, like the was that the northern side. Miss Nick, Miss Woody has the south side. Miss Nikki has the north side. Mm-hmm. And the north side, Miss Nikki would always plant like a bunch of lettuces and stuff back there because it would get a lot of shade. So like she would plant the mm-hmm. easy stuff that can grow where it's not, you know, super full sun. Yeah. And so that was her side, and Miss Woody planted strawberries in her back part, and she had them for like a few years. And then Nicole told me that it's time to rip them out because they like get old after a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. which I didn't know, but that was a part of me learning. So <laughs> it was yeah. nice. She had like a bunch of squash. She always planted a lot of beans, um, green beans, okra, which I used to then eat. A lot of tomatoes. Um, every kind of like leafy vegetable, like collard, kale, mustards, everything. She even like heirloom mustards, and those things was like tart, yes. like real tart, like. Uh, <laughs> like it, it, so um, that was it. It was it was like really nice. It was well kept. It was just like, um, it was them too, and they would just come out and do like a little bit every every day or every other day. Like two or two hours or whatever. Like they never was out like for like ninety two hours because they were older. Miss Nikki right. had to be like fifty or fifty something when I met her, and Miss Woody was like in her seventies. And Miss Nikki said she learned a lot of stuff from Miss Woody too. So I was like, oh, she just teaching all of us. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, everybody who coming here got to learn from Miss Woody. <laughs> so yeah, it was um, she was really nice, and she would just be like, oh, plant these here, plant those. She just told me what to do. I I didn't know. I didn't even know what half of the foods or vegetables was when she would tell me, like, what's this? Okra. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I don't know what that is. And I think you said she didn't even, yeah, you said, you said she didn't even like collard greens. Yeah, she brand. didn't She didn't like collard greens at all. But she planted, like, rows and rows of them, and she would give them away to everybody. She okay. only liked mustard greens. So I was like, that's the nicest thing I ever heard. But if people would walk by and say, hey, can I have a pepper or something, she would give it to them. She invited everybody into the garden. Mm-hmm. She never told nobody, like, oh, no, you can't come in. She would even let kids come in. Like, she didn't really, (laughs) like, care. She just was, like, she would give away so much food. And I'm like, oh, we should have been, like, counting or paying attention to it because 
she just she just gave it away to anybody. Yeah. If you walk past and you're like, oh, what's these? She'd be like, oh, those are beans. Like if she grew, you know, cucumbers going up the fence on the Burke Street side, you ripped mm-hmm. them off. She'd be like, that's good. They'll keep growing now. <laughs> like she didn't, she didn't think uh, like keep everything. She'd be like, I can't eat all of this myself. So take whatever you want. So that's how I got in the garden. I was like, I'll volunteer to get some food. And then she just was giving out food to everybody anyway. So it was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And so now, mm-hmm. obviously, um, things have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, well, there was an article in WHYY mm-hmm. in April 2021, actually, where you talked about picking up seedlings from the seedling distribution for the mm-hmm. garden. Yes. Um, but more importantly i was just there i mean more recently i was just there with you and saw what you've been Mm -hmm. working on Mm -hmm. um so what are your roles in the current garden and who else is involved it's me and it's uh mr malik and i don't know mr malik's last name but mr malik is like our neighborhood um what is it he catches all the animals that people don't want so he catches like raccoons and stuff (laughs) we had a groundhog in there one year he caught that for me because I didn't think we could have a groundhog because our garden is in the city, but it, it was eating all of our kale and stuff, so we couldn't really grow anything. Yeah. So it was a terror. So he caught it for us and kicked it out. So Malik has some of the beds that belong to um, Miss Nikki on the north side of the garden, and he always brings stuff and just puts stuff in. And I have Miss Nikki, Miss Woody's side, like planting into the ground. So over the next month, I hope to just like clean everything out, get everything in. I'm supposed to actually pick up plants from, you know, some transplants today so I can get some in and then just like keep going and keep giving stuff out. So once people know you in there and it's like clean and like everything is growing, they just start asking you for stuff again. So the cycle will continue. Yeah. You have like the east and south side. Yeah. Yeah. You also mentioned, I think, that your son is involved. Yeah. So my son has been helping me for since I've been working in the garden because, you know, just bring him with you if you're going out and so he can run around and stuff. Um, so he, I usually let him do the front part where he plant flowers um, in the front for Miss Woody, like mm-hmm. a little strip where we just put a bunch of flowers and stuff. And so that is what he considers his side. He's really good at at digging holes so he digs the stuff and put it in there but i would tell him that's his area and my area is the rest so he's always like my area looks way better than yours like i've been feeding you with actual food out of this garden you planted two things and you know now you're just a professional gardener um i gave him some sunflower seeds one year to put in and i gave him like popsicle sticks like you got to put a stick where you put the seeds so i can know where you put them and he never put the sticks down so every year we get random sunflower seeds just plant anywhere so i just work around them um <laughs> he also uh did the junior flower show at his school and he planted like one bean in a cup and got a like blue ribbon and he told me like you never got a ribbon <laughs> like you're not even a good gardener I'm like just like the like what kind of monster i've been feeding you for years like you ate everything i grew but you're a better gardener than me for this one bean in a cup. I couldn't believe it. I was, he put the ribbon on the refrigerator, everything. Like, it was a slap in the face. <laughs> but it was nice. It's nice that he's interested in it. Um, it's nice that he, like, knows some of the stuff that I do. And he knows how to grow things. So whenever he does anything with growing at school, they're like, he's really good at this. But he doesn't really care to do it unless I, like, make him do it now because he's 11. But we've been doing this probably since he was, like, two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, but so the butterfly bush, mm-hmm. like that's his, and it, in the southeast corner, in, like mm-hmm. his area. Yeah. Um, but like the strawberries and stuff, and you mm-hmm. know the raised bed. Mm-hmm. That's like. Yeah. Yeah, more yours. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but so. Oh man, uh, I guess I want to go from there actually. Mm-hmm. Um. A little bit more to the you know the relationship between the garden and the neighborhood because you mentioned mm-hmm. like mrs woody's kind of community relationship where mm-hmm. it's like anybody can come in mm-hmm. just get food um in the april 2021 article again mm-hmm. whyy about the seedling distribution you mentioned that the garden offers healthy na- options to people in the neighborhood um and obviously you also mentioned mm-hmm. with, like the kids that mm-hmm. like you know that they would see at the farm stand Mm-hmm. the fruit the literal fruits of their labor mm-hmm. like and you know that interaction but so now mm-hmm. may 2022 
why do you feel like the garden is important? Um, because it provides like an opportunity for healthy food. Um, so in that neighborhood, they before you know a few years ago we only had to save a lot. Now I think if you go further down, we have an Aldi, but we don't have a lot of healthy food options. So I felt like you know everything the gardeners were doing and just giving away food and like even getting you know sweet potatoes from Mr. Harrison and everything helped everybody like it's a lower income community and as much as everybody you know will act like they always have money always have it I worked at the school and the after school program and you know the elementary school a lot of people don't so I would like I really think having a healthy safe food and for a low cost or no cost is like super helpful to like a lot of moms and a lot of people in the neighborhood like it's like a family a real family neighborhood you see little kids walking around all the time at one time it was like three different schools in like a four block radius so it's like it's a lot of kids around here so everybody should have access to like you know food fresh food yeah and last i mean the last time i was at the ld my neighborhood they did they definitely did not have collard greens yeah. or mustard greens yeah. so i think that most people and mrs woody would have mm-hmm. been would, yeah would, they, would, they would be <laughs> really offended that they don't <laughs> have stuff that we eat all the time and it's like a it's I think it's more like a cultural thing like she would grow like beans and I remember growing up we always ate like beans and rice or you know something like that or like okra and tomatoes so it's like stuff that is like to us like a lot of like the people in the neighborhood came up here from down south so they know how to grow and they grow the stuff particularly that we like to eat so it's like oh yeah I like you know like doing this like even I didn't even the stuff that I didn't like eating once you learn how to grow it and learn how to cook it, you really like it. And uh, working with older people, they'll tell you exactly how to make this with <laughs> this, this, and this, and use these seasonings. So it's like, oh, this is good, okay. So the gardening also is like, it's not, so it's partly about getting healthy food options, mm-hmm. and it's also partly about like a cultural education. Yeah, yeah. Passing. Yeah. Because a lot of the kids at the after school program, when they would try like, you know, like turnips or turnip greens or something, that stuff that they don't get to eat every day, they would tell their mom, and their mom would be like, well, how do you make this? Because he came home talking about eating turnips. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you can make it like this. You can saute it like this, or you can make the greens like this. So it's like, you know, keeping some of that stuff going. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, okay, I want to ask at this point, you've, get, you've given a lot of really great stories um, about the community garden. Um, but I wanted to ask um, if you had... Uh, any others that you'd like to share? Um, for the community gardens? Well, for, for uh, just Ms. about Woody's Mrs. Garden. Woody's in particular, but also the community gardens, because you worked with, you were, I mean, you remain obviously involved with all of those in the Strawberry Mansion, but you also worked with them directly, more directly, like mm-hmm. specifically with APRA. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, for Miss Woody's garden, after she passed, we had like a Miss Woody day, so you had to neighborhood like they had a block party and we cleaned up the block like the garden was all like good we let people come in um we had guys playing like instruments that he made like handmade interest instruments we had like you know like different members on the block that knew her come over there and her husband who like passed after her came over and walked around in the garden and got to sit down and listen to music and stuff and I know it made him feel really good to just be like, oh, this is, you know, where my wife used to be and spend time and where we used to be. And he's like, he would tell me, like, when they raised their kids, they would eat a lot of food out of there and all that stuff. So it was like, it was a really good day. Like, it, it's a lot of work to get them to block off the street and, you know, on Burke Street and 32nd Street because it's, you know, a lot of traffic that come around there. But mm-hmm. it was really nice. Yeah. And his son spoke. It was just a lot. It was like a, a few months after she passed. His son being uh, Mr. Woody's yes, son, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was um, it was really nice. I remember I, I'm gonna remember that forever because it was like yeah. such a good day, and just know them knowing that somebody was still taking care of it. You know, it was a lot. Yeah. So now, um, obviously, you mentioned that the garden is being run mostly by you Mm -hmm. and Mr. Malik. Mm -hmm. Um, What are your future hopes um, for Mrs. Woody's I would like to get more people interested in gardening. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually asked the church if we can do like volunteer days. So the church is on 32nd and Berks is Prince of Peace Baptist Church. So they we're trying to get Mm -hmm. that started so I can have more help in the garden. And this is the same church that um, 
you use the computers for yeah so, yes. Abra, yeah prince of peace got it um so they have people come out just so i can have more help mm -hmm. um and also just like have it more like cleaned up like it's like the fence is really old i would like mm -hmm. to get that fixed and then you know just like keep gardening keep it and find more people interested so that it'll keep going Right, because that fence was installed in the 1980s. By yeah, <laughs> right, right. So old. it's really old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so you're, you want to you want to keep the legacy going mm -hmm. and kind of renew mm -hmm. the yeah the the garden pool, yeah the gardener's pool. But um, I guess and now but also you as you were saying you work with a lot of you know mm -hmm. community organizations around the city mm -hmm. um, who and they also sometimes end up developing community gardens and mm -hmm. lots of clean. So what hopes do you have for community gardens in Philadelphia in general? In general, I would like all the gardens to be, like, saved, like, in a way where you can develop on them. Um, so I grew up in that neighborhood. We have, like, Fairmount Park is, like, if I lived on 32nd Street, the park is on 33rd Street. So I had access to a lot of green spaces as a kid, and it's a lot of development in Philly right now. I feel like one day there will be, like, very few places to go except that park. So I feel like we need to save all of the gardens and all the green spaces, even if they're just like some of the lots you just save as a green space. Because I feel like as we develop more, it's going to be less and less until it's almost none. And everybody doesn't live in a neighborhood where they can go one block away and it's a park. Some people live like 10 blocks away from any green space. So the lot becomes like a great green space. So in the summer, people sit out there, relax out there, play you know, play football, I've seen people out there doing karate, like, you know, have baby showers, have birthday parties, like, green space, even if it's a garden or not, is so important, and it's going to be more important as everything develops in the city. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Marquita. I've learned a lot, and I think that's a really good note to earn to end the interview on. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to turn the recorder off now. Okay.